today we finally have the first new CPU competitor for desktop PCs in decades. Intel's new marketing material is disgusting, and both AMD and Nvidia are fixing one of the biggest issues in PC gaming. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, we finally have a real competitor in the desktop PC space, with the announcement of Qualcomm's Snapdragon X2 Elite chips. That's right, the company is already back, and they brought with them much faster chips to better compete with AMD and Intel. And I've gotta say that I'm really excited to see what these can do. Now, the reason I say that these are a real competitor in desktop PCs is because Qualcomm is actually releasing mini PCs with these. Of course, you can see that this one is unbelievably small, almost like a stack of CDs, but it's an actual desktop that plugs into an external monitor. With all of that said, let's go over the specs and why these new chips are seriously impressive. As you can see, there's three new chips here, the Snapdragon X2 Elite Extreme, and the Snapdragon X2 Elite, then the Snapdragon X2 Elite. <sighs> Yeah, with these, you can only really tell by a slight part number difference. We're looking at X2E 88-100 and X2E 80-100. They definitely should better differentiate these, but that aside, let's really focus on the Snapdragon X2 Elite Extreme. As you can see here, this one comes with a total of 18 cores with 12 prime cores and six performance cores. Now, you might think that the performance cores are the really good ones, but in fact, the prime cores are the best ones here, because as you can see, the 12 cores have much higher clocks and they're clearly shown as being bigger cores than these six performance cores. So that's a little bit confusing just because so far most CPUs have called the best cores, the performance cores, although none of them have called them prime cores, it's usually efficiency cores or something like that. Either way, right off the bat, you'll probably quickly notice that the clock speed is one of the major upgrades with these new CPUs. So as you'll notice, when it comes to dual core boost, these bad boys get up to a whopping five gigahertz, which is a massive boost over the current Snapdragon X Elite chips highest in one at 4.3 gigahertz. But in fact, the clock speed is better across the board because it also offers up to 4.4 gigahertz clock across the entire stack, except for the performance cores, which get up to 3.6 gigahertz. But don't forget that this is 18 total cores versus the 12 total cores with the original Snapdragon X Elite. In fact, as you can see, the 12 prime cores, when all of them are overclocked, they get 4.4 gigahertz which is higher than just the dual core boost frequency of the original Snapdragon X Elite, and it's significantly higher than the max multi-core frequency of 3.8 gigahertz. So I mean, we're talking a 400 megahertz boost here and even higher when we're just looking at the dual core boost. Now, moving on, you'll notice that these also come with quite a bit more total cache of 53 megabytes versus 42 megabytes, and oh, it's also based on the three nanometer process. Moving on, it also comes comes with more AI tops, leading it to 80 tops, and it has LPDDR5X memory with up to 228 gigabytes per second bandwidth. The Adreno GPU is also supposed to be a big step up with the overall package looking like a serious competitor. We'll obviously have to wait and see just how well this translates to performance, but this could be a major issue for Intel and AMD. And next up, I've got to talk about this site I recently found that lets you build full on websites, apps, tools, just about anything you could think of, all with just an AI prompt, meaning forget about coding or anything like that. And while they sponsored today's video, this truly is incredible. It's called Lovable, and it really is as cool as it sounds. I mean, look at some of the examples that have already been created in Lovable. Like, this is a build generator. You just put your name in, invoice information, all of that, pick your template, and 
you're good to go. It spits out a bill. Then this is a market tracker for the stock market. I mean, look at this thing. And all you have to do is type in a prompt to create pretty much anything you could want. It supports both front end and back end designs for a full fledged site or app. And you can edit the details visually on the page or by prompting the AI again. Basically, Lovable saves you hours of repetitive setup and boilerplate coding to go from idea to a live site or app in minutes. It really is that easy. And my viewers can get 20% off when you use my code GAMERMELDYT20 in all caps. So don't wait and go to lovable.dev today. And next up, Intel just released what is quite possibly the most disgusting piece of marketing material I think I've ever seen. And that's saying a lot given Intel's past. It includes the usual cherry picking that makes things look better than what they actually are. But this is so egregious that Intel should flat out be ashamed. Basically, Intel just released a bunch of slides trying to compare their core ultra chips to AMD's Ryzen 9000 and even 9000X3D. And like I said, it's terrible. So starting things off, we can see that Intel compared the 9950X3D to the Core Ultra 9 285K. And right off the bat, you'll likely notice a problem. Intel is actually trying to say that their 285K is around the same performance of the 9950X3D in games. And this is complete crap. Because when we look at, say, Tom's hardware across 16 games at 1080p, the 9950X3D wins by nearly 38% on average. Basically, Intel took some of the best games they could find for the 285K and pretended that because they included some that the 9950X3D won at, that they were giving it a fair comparison. Except even in those where it shows that they're losing, that's still some of the best examples for the 285K. And when we actually look at each individual game, I also noticed that other reviewers showed that the 285K did even worse than what they're saying here, which would mean that they may have cherry picked the best scenes within the games themselves. It's unreal, but it gets even worse because they even pretend that the 285K is much better in content creation, but multiple reviewers actually suggest the opposite. Now, I will say that this one is a bit more nuanced, and depending on the application, Intel can certainly win, but this really isn't a fair comparison. Not to mention that things like Cinebench 2024 might show the 285K wins here, but while it's somewhat true, when you turn on PBO for the 9950X3D, it becomes the other way around. But don't worry, because it gets even worse from here. In this slide, they try to compare relative performance per dollar in gaming versus the 9700X and the 265K. The issue is that they list the 9700X as $359 but the 9700X has been selling for $300 at multiple retailers. Now, you might be thinking, oh, but Gamer Meld, maybe they were just comparing launch prices, except the 265K launched at nearly $400. So this is still a terrible comparison. It should really be the complete opposite. Now, don't get me wrong, Intel CPUs can compete in certain areas, especially in professional workloads with their lower end parts. They really dominate there. But to manipulate the data like this is completely absurd. Like I said, this is flat out disgusting and it really shows us that Intel hasn't learned a thing. And lastly for today, a new feature just launched that's set to fix one of the biggest issues in PC gaming, and specifically PC gaming. This is something that's barely been talked about, but it's a massive change. I'm talking game loads up to seven times, maybe even 10 times faster. It fixes stuttering. This really is huge. So as many of you know, one of the big reasons I and many others love PC gaming is choice. There are millions, if not billions of possible configurations that really make your PC your own. Unfortunately, that can be a problem in trying to optimize for all these different variations. And probably the biggest of those issues is shader compilation. Basically, shader code is written in high level languages that your GPU can't read. So for the GPU to know what to do, it has to be compiled or translated into code that your 
GPU can understand. The issue is that it has to be compiled specifically for your game, GPU, and even driver version. Consoles are able to pre-compile shader code because there are only a few different hardware configurations per console. But for PCs, because there are so many possible variations, it has to be compiled on device. And this causes some big issues, like much longer load times for games that pre-compile on startup, as well as stuttering during the actual game itself, especially for games that don't pre-compile on startup. So yeah, if you've ever noticed stuttering during a game, it could have been caused by this issue. And this leads me to the fix. Last month, Microsoft announced a new feature called Advanced Shader Delivery. But when it was initially announced, it only supported Xbox Ally and Ally X through the Xbox PC app. Well, they just announced a new SDK that can bring the feature to all PCs. So what Advanced Shader Delivery does is it creates a new standard format called State Object Database. And as it states, the company collects the shader data from the game and packages it into the SODB. The DirectX developers then worked with GPU manufacturers to separate the shader compiler from the graphics driver, allowing the team to merge it with the SODB and creates a pre-compiled shader database. When you download a game through the Xbox PC app, it will detect your system configuration and include the proper PSDB for your system. So when you launch a game for the first time, it will detect the preloaded shaders and skip the lengthy compilation process. Now, they mentioned Xbox PC app, but with the launch of this new SDK, Microsoft released a set of APIs for digital storefronts to integrate it into their installers. And basically, this means that it will install the pre-compiled shader information with the game instead of having to compile it later. To give you an idea of how big this is, according to Microsoft, we're looking at a reduction of game load times by up to 85%, and Tom's hardware is claiming up to 10 times faster. Plus, this would eliminate the stutter caused by this in games. It really could be huge. And with Microsoft's new announcement, AMD has already released their developer preview that adds support for advanced shader delivery and NVIDIA is apparently working on theirs as well. Ultimately, this is a huge deal that could change PC gaming forever.